said, come on in some weekends as he's ready to take over power from the APC as he declares to run for president in 2023. He's our guest tonight on the program. And the Minister of Information, Laya Muhammad, says that the PDP is desperate to take over power in 2023, criticizing the move of the opposition party of a lawsuit on the APC convention. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Kimbale in Abuja. Let's begin tonight by letting you know that the alternative political forces are speaking to Nigerians on how to get things right at the polls. Renowned professor of political economics, Professor Pato Tommy, has asked that Nigerians should stand up and be ready to correct the mistakes of the past with their votes in 2023. They have used public resources in their personal interest and in running political parties that have only crippled the possibilities of progress in our country. And Nigerians and people of faith must say that enough is enough. That we want a new country and that these kinds of leaders should not be allowed to continue to lead us. We must say that in 2023, we want a clean sheet. We want to get rid of these kinds of politicians. We want new politics and new politicians. All right, then. Here are some of your political roundup stories. A group with the name Concerned Nigerians has purchased the PDP nomination form for the governor of Sokoto State, Aminu Tambua. Spokesperson of the group, Olumuyua Boru, gave reasons for the action, which among others included encouraging vibrant, detribalized, energetic, and resourceful persons like Governor Tambua to pilot the affairs of Nigeria. Members of the group insisted that at a point like this in nation building, competence and resourcefulness should be priority ahead of region, religion, or tribe. Governor Tambua said he's still consorting across the country, after which he will make his intention public. And when the consultations are completed, I'll come back to you as to whether to go ahead and fill the form and return it or otherwise. The impeached deputy governor of Zamfara State, Mr. Marty Gusso, insists he remains the deputy governor of the state. He said this in Abuja shortly after picking a nomination form to contest for the governorship seat of Zamfara State on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. Mr. Madi lamented the current security challenges and other issues in the state and promised to tackle them if elected. I was given my mandate by the people of Zamfara State, not by His Excellency. That should be very, very clear. And the constitutional provisions by our laws in Nigeria states that a judge can give status quo to any case and every any case in fact before the court every party should maintain the status quo until the conclusion of that case a group in katina state with a tag name concerned apc stakeholders has demanded that the governorship seat be zoned to southern kaduna ahead of the election in 2023 the group asked that the next governor to take over from Malam Nasser Air Rufai should come from the Axis to give a sense of inclusiveness to other parts of the state. The convener of the group, Joseph Gutama, while addressing a news conference in the state capital, promised to mobilize the electorate for the APC to win and remain in power beyond 2023 and to consolidate on the legacy project and reforms of Governor Nasser Air Rufai. Former governor of Burnu State, Senator Kashim Shatima, has thrown his weight behind the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, as the party's presidential candidate in 2023 election. Senator Shatima described Tinubu as a true nationalist who would ensure a united and economically transformed Nigeria. The former governor, while addressing supporters of the Tinubu support group in Abuja, expressed confidence in Tinubu to consolidate on the achievement of President Muhammad Buhari. We need a president who understands the dynamics of a modern economy. We need a president, secondly and most importantly, 
who has the competences and leadership skills to add value to the Nigerian nation. The new Nigerian People's Party at the Moor chapter has inaugurated officials who will pilot the affairs of the party in the state. The inauguration ceremony which took place in Yola witnessed a turnout of former members of the PDP and APC, including a former deputy governor of the state, Mohamed Tahir. According to the chairman of the party, Finas Elijah, the state has witnessed a significant decline in true democracy over the years due to poor leadership, hence the need for another political party to take over. The Vice President General for Hanese Ndibo, Dr. Kinsley Dozier, has expressed optimism that the presidential ticket will come to the southeast of the country come 2023. Dr. Dozier, during an interaction with journalists in Umwaya, Abia State, considered that necessary to end the allegation of marginalization by some residents. We are consulting that the committee has said to each other the people to the the newly elected National Youth Leader of All Progressive Congress, Dayo Israel, has assured youth in the party of good representation during his tenure. He spoke with journalists in Abuja while paying a familiarization visit to the national headquarters of the party. He promised to make moves to get concession fees to encourage youth seeking elective positions. How do we find a solution to the challenges facing our nation and our young people? Now you've been served of all your all your political roundup stories. Let's tell you that the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, has criticized the main opposition political party, PDP, for what he described as the PDP's desperation to take over power in 2023. Elijah Mohammed at a press conference today in Abuja queried the intention of the PDP to want to return to power, considering their performance in 16 years. Take a listen to the minister. As you know, the folks on the other side have been doing everything in recent times to overheat the polity. They stop the achievements of administration and spread fake news and misinformation. Yes, it could be very cold out there for the hungry and desperate opposition. But, very, but every indication that they don't even want to wait for the 2023 elections before testing their popularity or acceptability at the polls. How else does one explain their court case seeking the declaration of our convention as illegal? How do you explain their threat to other answers that pushed Nigeria to the brink. How do you explain their glaring misinformation regarding the nation's state of affairs? Gentlemen, there's nothing wrong in having a fair and viable opposition in the democracy. The Minister of Information, Laya Mohammed. Now, Governor Yinsum Wike of River State will run for president in 2023. That is official. Yesterday, hundreds of People's Democratic Party presidential primary election delegates from Benue State, led by the governor, Samuel Autumn, openly endorsed the River State governor, Mr. Wike, who formally declared his intention to run for the office of the president come 2023. Governor Samuel Autumn and the senator representing Benue South, Senator Registry, Mr. Abba Amor, says the entire Benue delegates are behind Governor Wike for his act of love and support to the distressed farming population during the 2018 armed herdsmen attacks and his strong support over the years. Take a listen to him. I have the capacity to move this country forward because things are wrong. Things are wrong. You don't need people who you don't know where they stand. I, you know where I stand in anything. I never hit my position. It may be against you. It may be in your favor. But I must say, this is my own uh, position. Don't have a president, you don't know where he stands. There are people who are moving about. Ask all of us. Check who those who want to run for president. Who can win his state to PDP now? Who? Who? It's me. It's me. I will travel overseas. The state is PDP. 
but ask them, can they win their state? Can you bring your state to PDP? Is it to use my own to come and win the election? Is it to use me and win? Ask them. Look at the last election. In my state, APC never had 25%. But those who are running, some of them lost, some of them paid the APC won 45, 50%. Me, not 25%. Since 2015, they are not to win. Even now, you can't win it. All right, eh? Governor Yinsong Wike in Benue said, Tonight, Governor Wike is our guest on the program. Governor Wike will be, by 2023, be serving out a two term as governor of the South South State. He's a lawyer and a member of uh, the Life Bencher. He was a federal minister under the Good Luck Jonathan administration. He has also served as local government chairman. Governor Yinsam Wike joins us here live in Abuja City. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's official now. You're running for president <laughs> of Nigeria. Well, Have you obtained a form now? Uh, well, the expression of the collection of form is on Friday. So you still have uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so I believe, by the grace of God, uh, from now to that time, the form will be obtained. Why do you want to become Nigeria's president? I want to become Nigeria's president because, one, we're in problems. And I want to offer myself to the people of this country to solve such problems. Because I do know, as a man who loves this country, as a man who's committed for the development of this country, you can't be standing aloof. See your country sliding the way it's sliding. And then you just sit back to say, look, there's nothing that can be done. As governor of the state, I saw problems. And I was able to solve such problems. And I believe that, look, should we just close our eyes and allow this country to go the way it's going? And they say, it's not your business, no. No, I said, no, I'm going to offer myself so that I can contribute. Take, for example, the issue of insecurity in this country today. You know, some people trivialize this matter. Trivialize this matter because you cannot talk about the economy. You cannot talk about agriculture. You cannot talk about infrastructure when you have this level of insecurity. And so I believe that I have the capacity to take head on on this issue of insecurity. When I came to River State, at that time, along the road, you will see people have been kidnapped in the bus, 14 people, this militancy, kidnapping. I said, my God, what is all these roads I'm doing? What is infrastructure and education health center when people cannot be secured? So many people left the river state. And I said to myself, look, I took oath of office to protect life and property. And without protection of life and property, no government can be said to be doing anything. Because if you are doing road and there are no human beings, what will the road be useful for? If you are building schools, there are no human beings. Who will go to the schools? If you are building hospitals, there are no human beings. Who will use the hospital? So the first issue is protection of life and property. Well, in this country today, you said uh, you want to become president because you think you can serve. You think you understand the problems. But in terms of security, which is one of the issues that you've raised tonight, what do you perceive as the major problem of insecurity in this country? First of all, so many people will come up with theory that because of unemployment, because of hunger, which is a factor. Who's the factor? I think we've gone beyond that now. Because the insecurity we are seeing today has gone beyond the level of where just people are only hungry. We're not talking about fighting uh, insurgents, people who want to uh, take over the country by one word or other through forceful uh, means, right? So that is a critical issue. If it is just merely insecurity in terms of kidnapping, you can relate that to 
people talking about hung, being hungry, poverty, and that. But we are talking about now we have external forces are trying to take over your country. It's no longer limited to the issue of poverty. And as a government, you owe a duty to your country as the president of Nigeria. Now look, how can I be here? Just look at what happened in a few days about people or bandits taking over or nearly took over international airport. No longer kidnapping or taking uh, people from the buses. Or, now, trying to take over an international airport. That's Kaduna. That's Kaduna. Is Kaduna an international airport? Yes, an international airport. Kaduna airport is an international airport. Yes. And what does that pretend in our country? What does it tell investors? How did they come in? What happened? Why are we always being reactionary? Why are we always trying to defend? That's why I've been proactive. No intelligence. No intelligence. You think the present government is not doing enough? They are not doing enough in terms of intelligence and even commitment to it. Now, let me tell you, it, I'm not saying that the armed forces or security agencies are not trying to do it or are not doing their best. But you see, as a government, as a leader, you owe a duty to superintend, to supervise what is happening. Take, for example, I'm not satisfied when we hold security council meeting and my service commanders will tell me we are doing this, we are doing that. I said, no, 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 no. You have a time limit. You have a period. From this period to this period, I do not want to hear that we are still having increase in this uh, kidnapping, in this arm robbery and the rest of it. You must be able to tell those who are serving under you, there's no politics as far as security is concerned. I don't care where you come from. I don't care which religion you belong to. All I care is results. So I told them, look, you have told me to provide this and this and this and that. And I provided. Why am I not getting the required results? Why is it sort of decreasing? Why is it increasing? Why? And they've come to realize because they have seen that I have passion. They've seen that I'm committed to it. And they have no choice but to work. Take, for example, when we were talking about oil theft and the way it has affected, uh, the oil bunker has affected the environment in the state. Ordinarily, it is not within the duration of the state government to talk about oil. But again, it is within my jurisdiction, within my power, to talk about the health and the environment of my people. I said, look, this oil bunkering is affecting the health of our people. It's affecting the environment. Should I just fold my hands? I said, no. I have to lead the war. I have to go to the I said, no. We cannot accept it. And I said, look, the communities, you come around, chiefs, Youths, CDC, you cannot tell me that you don't know those who are involved in this. You cannot tell me you are seated there, every day you are seeing tankers moving. Therefore, Mr. Chief, Mr. CDC, Mr. Youth Development, all of you will be held accountable if I hear that this oil bunkering is still taking place in this community. So you will lead from the front, that's what you are saying? That's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, the people must understand that, look, as head, you are fighting against this, not merely coming on television to say I've directed the service chiefs. That is not it. You think that a president should go to the center of the action and take charge from there? First of all, if I did not go, I never even knew what's called oil bunkering. Because you begin to imagine, what is oil bunkering? How did they do it? Right? So I had to go. And you saw for yourself? And I saw for myself, I said, my God, what is this? Where I saw more than four kilometers, perhaps I lived, linking to the oil pipeline. You can't believe it. 
And that has given me the first impression. Oh, this word is called oil bunking. This is the way it is done. Not what I am told. Now I saw. First hand. Yes. So and, having and seen. And now you have a solution. Of to course. It. And then having seen it, I said, no, there's no way the communities are not involved. There's no way the security agencies are not involved. So you think that there are fifth columnists in the security agencies that that's, I mean, perhaps the reasons why the perpetration of this insecurity now, is going now, on? Now, 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 sure, let country. me tell you. There was a time that the chief of defense staff called the oil producer states to a meeting. The IG was there. Other service chiefs or security agencies were there. SSS, NIA, they were all there. And they're talking about how do we collaborate? In fact, the GMD of an NPC was there. How do we collaborate? How do we work together to reduce, if not stopping, this illegal lawyer theft and lawyer book? And for Christ's sake, as I said, the problem with Nigeria we always hold meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings. And I told the chief of the first time, she do tell herself a simple truth. You say yes. Are you not aware that only all, all, all of you are involved in this? Not you as a person. Are you not aware security agencies are involved in this? What is the sanction you are put in place if anybody is found guilty in this? Listen, as okay, take for example, we have our tax force. And the soldiers or police are being confronted escorting tankers who are involved in this oil bunkering. And somehow, the exchange fireworks. And then a soldier dies. What do you do? You now move the battalion to go to that community that the soldier was killed. You won't tell them how the soldier, why was the soldier killed. You won't tell them that. All you will tell the public is that a soldier was killed. And a soldier who cannot accept that. But you refuse to tell them that the soldier was killed because he was escorting a tanker who was involved in illegal oil bunkering. And then the community of the tax force of government resisted it. And in course of that, there was a problem. But what you will tell Nigerians is that, look, we can't take it for you to kill a soldier. So I ask them, if you say today that this illegal Oil bunkering will stop or will reduce. It will reduce. All you require is, look, security agencies be committed to say, look, we can't continue to. If I'm the commander in chief, and I can tell you that, I can tell you that. Look how it's affecting the economy. Look how it's affecting the economy of the country. I hear when Mr. President said the other day to giving a marching order to the Minister of Petroleum and this. How? How would they do it? Has it not been there for long? How would they do it? It required a synergy of the state government and the federal government. Like I came out to do, in fact, the GMD, in his remarks or in his contribution to NEC, told him that, oh, the way the river state governor have been fighting this illegal oil bunkering. And I said, you don't need to. What is your support to us? We are fighting to make sure this oil theft or illegal hypocrisy is being reduced. But what is the support of the state? Not. I mean, we're talking about insecurity in Nigeria now, yeah. and you're giving practical uh, experience of, uh, uh, as a governor in River State, and how you're tackling the issue of insecurity, especially in relation to oil bunkering. But the APC will say that your party, the PDP, I mean, you serve in the federal cabinet, that the monies that are meant to procure arms, that the, the generation of, uh, of insecurity today was uh, largely because of the PDP's reign and how they failed to provide the necessary fighting tools for our security agencies. And that's what, uh, that's what led to the degeneration of, ins of security in the country today. If, if I may understand you, are you saying that they said that the money meant to procure, procure arms that, were, that they it? went into private hands? Okay. And that's one of the reasons why okay. we have a degeneration today. Okay. okay. Now, you see, that's why I said. APC is a party founded on lies, propaganda. Every day excuses, excuses. Okay, assuming you don't, don't concede it, now you have taken over the reins of power. Right? Now, what have you done? 
They've bought two canoe air, air, aircraft. No, no, no. What have you done? They, they, those people whom you say that took those funds, what have you done against them? What have you done? The NSA was in court for... For, I for mean, us, it, I mean, it was it's not, see, it's not merely the charging NSA. you to court to score a political uh, goal. No, 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 no. No. What APC, as a government, have always done, it was, look, these people stole money. And we're going to charge them to court. All those that stole money, as alleged by them, who are they today? Who are they today? The new APC chairman is not facing the UFCC charge. It's not the new APC chairman. And you're fighting corruption. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very funny. As a party that claims to lead the war against corruption, and you have charged somebody for corruption. On, on allegations of corruption? Of corruption. You are the one, this same government, you are the one. And at the same time, you have made him your national party chairman. What a contradiction. Who, who is fooling who? Who is fooling who? You come and tell Nigerians? PDP misappropriated the funds of this country. PDP diverted the funds of this country. PDP stole all the money in this country. The same PDP people that you claimed that stole funds, that diverted funds, are the pillars of your party today. What a country is this? What a party is this? Listen, I cannot. I'm a commander in chief. The moment you have corruption charges, and I've come out to tell the country, I'm going to fight corruption. If there's anything linking you as being corrupt or facing corruption charges, with all due respect, I cannot allow you until your name is cleared. I cannot allow you to hold the leadership of the party or the appointment. Uh, 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 appoint I won't do that. You see, today I read where they say they have repented. Repented how? Have you repented that? Are you telling me they repented that? Oh, before, yesterday they stole, for example, and now they are not stealing again. We are talking about you came out as a party to say, I'm going to fight corruption. I say, you have been alleged to be corrupt, for example, and you have been charged to court. Yes, the law is clear until you are found guilty, but at least to show I'm serious in fighting the issue of corruption, so you have nothing to do in my, in my cabinet until the court clears you. Yes, that is the only way you can so, give confidence so, so to the people. You're questioning the moral burden on, on the APC, but they have also said, look, for your party and what you have done for Nigerians, that you don't deserve to come back into power. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> I, I had what uh, lie more about. That is the usual story. That's what we are saying. You said we are corrupt. That's what we are saying. You say we are corrupt. And therefore, you are going to fight the issue of corruption. And Nigerians voted for you. And you have come in. And all those who are left to be corrupt are those in your government. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. But does your party deserve, from the point of view of the view I mean, of, of Nigerians, yes. Can you does your party to deserve to no, no. return to power? Certainly not. Your party so, do, don't deserve it? The party deserves to come back. Listen, compare. It's a simple comparative analysis. Compare. You think your party is better than the APC presently? Show the 16 the, years show, versus the show, 7 show. years of the, the APC? The issue is not about 7 years. The issue about the suffering. The insecurity of the seven years is more than what we had in 16 years. That is the issue. It, it means that if we can suffer like this for these seven years, what happens in the next seven years? That is the truth of the matter. So you think? Are you telling me today, Shane, you are interviewing me, you are asking me a question. Are you telling me today the level of poverty in this country today can be compared? So when PDP was in power, you told Nigerians you are coming to solve the problems caused by PDP, assuming alleged problems caused by PDP. 
You saw you solving those problems. You are multiplying the problems. And so I'm, I'm the, because you question the mor mora, uh, moral, uh, the morality or the morale of the APC, I mean of governance. Yes. And I'm asking that uh, morally speaking, do you think that the Nigerian people uh, would vote your party in 2023? Certainly, Nigerians have compared and seen that. Look, we were thinking that these guys are sent. We didn't know that they have the worst record in life. You know. It's unfortunate. You know, Nigerians are such that things can sway them. In 2015, Nigerians were told all kinds of lies. Today, today, now the same Nigerians are saying, Haba, you have this, you have, you have, you have deceived us. We would have preferred to go along with PDP. Today, take for example, PDP is making a lot of positive impact in the states where they are superintending. That tells you where there's hope. And that's when Nigerians are saying, look, the only hope we can have now is for PDP to come back to power. Take for example. All right, so, no. Governor, please, we're doing for a big okay. apologies. Uh, we'll take a break, everyone. And when we return, Governor Yinsan Wicker is still with us. A lot of issues we shall be discussing when we return, plus the issue of zoning. we we'll discuss further with him, and we get to find out also what the northern PDP aspirants are up to on this issue of consensus and the agenda they've met again today, and you'll get to hear what well, they have obviously. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's continue uh, with our conversation with Governor Yin Sam Wiki of River State. But before we get back to him, let me let you know what happened today in Ben Red State. It doesn't look like that is uh, where political actions are taking place recently. Where three out of the four presidential aspirants on the platform of the opposition People's Democratic Party PDP, comprising of former Senate President Bukola Saraki, Governors uh, Aminu Tambual and Bala Mohamed of Sokoto and Bochi State have assured Nigerians of post election unity of the party, even if they fail to secure the ticket. The former Senate President Bukala Saraki was speaking to journalists after their meeting on behalf of the three northern presidential aspirants who are speaking on consensus and said they've paid an advocacy visit to Governor Samuel Otom in Benue State in Makodi, the state capital. Former Vice President Atiku Abuka, who we have been told, has been contacted on the ongoing arrangement for a united front against the APC-led government. Well, that is the update coming from Benue said As far as the northern aspirants in the PDP are concerned on the issue of consensus, let's get back to um, Governor Yun Sam Weekend. Okay, uh, take a listen to uh, Senate, uh, former Senate President Bukola Saraki. Our apologies for that. We'll, we'll get to you that soundbite in a bit. Uh, Governor, you heard the plan. Uh, perhaps we should allow you to land on that thought because I, I broke into your line of thought before we went on that break. Would you like to land on that? Thought? I was talking about the morality of your party wanting to come back to power. I mean, the APC will say, your, Nigerians rejected your party. And twice Nigerians voted against your party as far as the results were concerned, voted Mohamed Abouar. And they promised again that in 2023, they will beat your party again. Uh, so it's most unfortunate. Yes, there's nothing wrong that Nigeria believed in the lies that were the APC told in 2015. And um, Nigerians have now seen that, look, we thought that what we were told, that they were serious. We thought they said PDP diverted force. We thought that they have an idea to prove better the economy as better than what it was. But we have not seen, no, <laughs> they deceived us. They just wanted to acquire power. They wanted to be in power. And we have given them, we supported them, thinking that they have something to offer. Today, where is the position of Nigeria? As at the time they took over power, what was the exchange rate? 
as at the time they took over Barrow, what was level of insecurity? But you also say that what was the uh, what was oil, crude oil selling today, what is at the, the time? Today, what's the crude oil you selling? It's over hundred. It's over hundred. At the time, it was almost two hundred. Uh, it's it's, 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 it's never well over hundred and forty it's never, it's dollar correct. per barrel. Never correct. It has over within the same thing that is going on. So what? It just recently came. It's not recently. Russian, for how many months? Okay. For let it, let it let it even be just for one month. What has been the impact of it? What has been the impact? You see, you can deceive the people for a time, but you can't deceive them always. Nigerians believed that PDP was doing, was not doing the right thing then. But all this was based on propaganda lies, teachers of lies. So your party but, is planning to correct that? In fact, most of the things they were told were not correct. Nigerians have not seen that, listen, we were deceived. And that's why I say, in Nigeria, politics, propaganda. Nobody wants to tell you the simple truth. And that is what some of us are different, that we must be able to tell you the truth. You told Nigerians, the situation today, what I mean today, as of 2015, we can't continue with that. This government must be thrown away. And Nigerians believed, Nigerians believed you. Now Nigerians gave you the opportunity. Now see where you have kept Nigerians. Worse than the situation then. And I just look, we can't continue with this. This, the, the, this PDP far, 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 far much better than what we are seeing today. All right. Let me allow you to listen to, because this is another conversation I'd like you uh, to take on, the uh, former president, uh, Senate President uh, Bukola Saraki in Benue earlier today on the issue of consensus. The more we meet, the more we, we continue to share our views about the importance of the unity of our party, because we believe it's only PDP that has really the solutions to help us get out of the problem we are in this country today. And it's important as stakeholders, as key leaders of this party, that we are seen to be united. Some of the decisions we've taken today also is that we are going to embark in reaching out to other aspirants. We had already, of course, identified uh, uh, senior uh, leader of the party, the Wazirio, and also other aspirants across the country and also stakeholders, some of their former colleagues and governors are also are going to reach out to all part of this process of bringing us together and uniting the party. You had the uh, former Senate President Bukola Suraki there. Uh, the party has been talking about zoning and there's a lot of debate within the PDP in relation to zoning. First and foremost, let me get this clarity because I know yourself and the governor of Sokoto are very good friends. You supported him um, uh, around this time four years ago uh, uh, for his pre uh, presidential ambition. What happened? Um, uh, so, uh, he's still my very, 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 very good friend. In fact, uh, two days ago we spoke uh, in 2018, 2019 presidential election. Everybody in this country knew my position. I was the brain behind. I supported uh, the Tambawa because we zoomed it to the north. In 2017, all of us agreed that this should be zoned to the north. And that was why nobody from the south collected from for that election. And I have no regret. I have no regret. What I do not like is people to deny that there should not be zoning or there's no zoning. That is what I don't like. I cannot, because of my expression, deny certain things that had happened, certain things that were agreeable. And it is very clear in the Constitution, for me, I'm not running for presidency just merely because of issue it will be zoned to the south. No. In terms of performance, capacity, I have it. Who can face APC installation? I do think I do have that. But the point is that you must also say the truth. The provisions of our constitution is clear. The general provision under section seven, subsection three C said there should be rotation of party offices and elective office. There shall be rotation. 
the founding fathers of the party. They know the complexity. They know the diversity of this country. They know that. And they make sure that for equity, for fairness, for justice, this should be done. Clearly written in your party's constitution. Yes, section 7, subsection 3C. You see, what brings me in life? There are people I respect, I think that look, it doesn't matter what my ambition is. Tell the people the simple truth. Is it provided there? Yes or no? Tell them the truth. It does not stop you as an individual to contest election. You have that right. I mean, if you talk about equity, uh, Governor, yeah. uh, the question people will ask, what is exactly is equity in terms of the, the rotation of power, look, as far as the PDP is concerned? Yes, what is, what is, look, in this country, it's not just merely PDP. And that's why you are seeing APC is zoning it to the south. Why? They believe that they did not have had it. APC has not agreed to zone to this. They've not come no, out. No, but I mean, I mean, even though they have not come out, but we are all Nigerians. We are seeing what is going on. Like I said, I'm not running an election based on the principle of zoning. I'm running an election because I believe I have something to offer. But again, that does not mean that you cannot come out to say that in our party, we have always done zoning. That is the point I'm trying to make. So you cannot now stop zoning? You cannot do that. But, 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 but the last but, president on the platform of your party is from your zone. No, no, no. It is not done. You, you are not ruling the party. It is not based because, look, okay, take for example, if that is the argument, if that's the argument, okay. APC zone sit now to the south, right? APC wins the election, general election, right? In eight years, APC wins, rules Nigeria in another eight years. APC now say, look, we are zoning, we are going back to the north, right? Then you will now say, okay, because PDP did not win the presidency, it should still remain there. Then APC again wins in the north. Do you understand me? After the presidency has been in the south and goes to the north, APC now wins again for eight years. And says, so we are going back, let the presidency go to the south, for example. Then you also argue, no, this presidency should also not be zoned again. It should be there. That argument does not follow. What so because about? those who say that uh, the last president on the platform of PDP is from the South, you don't buy that argument. What kind of argument? You're looking at it no, from no, the no, basis no. of who, is the who president, sat in is the, the chair. Is the, president, is, the president of, is the president for PDP? We're talking about president of Nigeria. We're not talking about president of PDP. So the president likes of, of Nigeria. I mean, Otambuwa, the likes of uh, Atiku Abubakar, uh, the likes of Bukola Saraki from the northern extraction of this country should not be thinking about considering that look, President look, Muhammad Gwari is from look, the north. Look, look, I'm a very... Is that what you're saying? Look, I'm a very, very, uh, 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 what I call, sincere person. There's nothing that can make me because of power. I violate simple agreement. Whether it is written or unwritten, that makes you a gentleman. Just like I am today, just like I am today, if the party says they are zoning it to the north, I have no problem. But will you still run? Oh, I will not run, I will obey the party. But what I don't agree is for people to say that there shouldn't be zoning if you have the best. You know, they compare you to America. They compare you to Europe. I mean, that is not but another argument that we've had is that let us get the best candidate to defeat the APC. That's what <laughs> members of listen, your party listen, have said. Listen. They will now start talking that about argument, I, that I, argument I, is for selfish people. That argument is being propounded and advocated by people who are selfish. Because I want to run for president. So that argument 
it's good for me. Since you are talking no, about the, the point I'm making, yes, 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 I will come to that. Okay. So the point I'm trying to make is that look, people should be sincere and abide to the norms, to the constitution, to the convention of the way we have been doing things in the party. People should, it doesn't matter because you believe if you don't run for president now, it may be difficult for you, or you believe that this is my time, I will win. Therefore, let us jettison any other agreement we have had before. No, 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 it's not fair. No. I, I'd like to ask you, since you're talking about equity, a lot of people will say, oh, you've had a South-South person, I mean, run the affairs of this country before, in terms of equity, five years for Gulag Jonathan. Um, uh, a South, Southeast person has never had opportunity, a North Central person has not had an opportunity. But are those who have uh, argued also to say the likes of Yusum Wike, uh, the likes of Rotimi Amrichi are from the Equerry extraction and they are Igbo speaking of River State. Uh, do you stand on that kind of argument? I don't, oh, want, to, I don't want to go into that kind of uh, debate. The point <laughs> is that we don't, we don't zoom. But, but for, are, no, are the Equerry no, no, people, the Igbo people of uh, River State? Uh, the, uh, I don't want to go into that debate. The, uh, I don't want to go into that. The issue here is not, I have no problem whether I'm an Igbo or I'm not Igbo. That is not the issue. The issue here is that we are talking about PDP. And we are saying that, look, we have never zoned southwest, southeast, north central. We have never done that. All we have always done was zone to the north, was zone to the south. When it comes to the south, they are not micro zone. It's like we zone the party chairman to the north. We never zone to north central. <laughs> there was no zoning like that. What we said, the party chairman, should lead, leave the south and go to the north. And in the north, then I macro zone to the north uh, center. So it is left for those in the south, for example, assuming that it's okay, it should come from the south. We, should, we, we cannot but see can that. a southern candidate of the PDP win for the PDP in this coming election? What, uh, what, what does that mean? That's an argument, people. Well, argument by who? That if uh, the APC puts up a southern candidate, yes. can a PDP southern candidate match an APC southern candidate? What kind of? Uh, show that to be very unfair for anybody to even No, those are the arguments well, the what, members what, of the party are putting up. Who are those? Let them, let them show me the result from their states. Let them show us the result from their states. Look at the last election in uh, 2019. Who are those that gave PDP the vote? You see, it is, it is not, it, it is easy for you to come up to begin to put arguments that you know you cannot defend. Say, look at the last results in, 19, in 2019. Look at the results. Show us which of the zones brought the results. Take for example, in my, in my own state, APC never had 25%. Yes, it's true. I gave the higher, the, my state gave the higher vote as far as PDP is concerned. We did that in 2015, since 1999. So if anybody does that or anybody says that, that will be very much unfair. Uh, let me, uh, so you're ready for whatever the party, the zoning uh, committee comes up with, you're ready for it and you abide with it? For me, that's why I've never left this party since 1998. Every decision must not be good to you. But what is important as a party person, I believe in the party, the party has given me everything, I won't because of the decision, therefore I leave the party. I won't do that. But you stay and give it a good fight this time around. When I supported Tambawa, he lost. I came out, I challenged any state, any governor that would say support Atiku more than me. And you see, it is your belief in the party. I have no other place, I have no other party to go to. I cannot leave my party. Mm. And that is why when anything happens in my taking, people say, look, you take it too personal. I say, yes. Why do I take it personal? I have no other room. I have no other house. Toronto. And I don't want the house to be destroyed. So if you are doing anything that will destroy PDP, I take it personal. Let me take you because uh, l l let's uh, try to wrap up qui uh, quietly now on the issue of uh, inclusion women and youth. Youth, for example, yeah. they make a very big population of voting population in this country. Women also. But if you look at what happened in the women bills, you were one of those who spoke up. Uh, those are uh, population in the, uh, the voting block that, that they feel that they've been left out out of the scheme of things. What are your plans and agenda to satisfy those? Uh... You know, 
you know, uh, Sharon, thank you for that. And let me tell you, and that's what I say in this country, we are too, we are too, well, let me not use that word. So, much, so many people are too fake. So many people think loving women is by coming out to kiss your wife in the boat. Loving women is by hosting birthday for your, for, your, for, your, for your wife, for your kids. No. You see, you have a daughter. You have a wife who has a PhD, a professor. You sent your daughter to school, one of the best schools in England, in America. She comes out with the best result. And then you say, she's my daughter. She cannot participate in governance. In my state, and that is why I think too that the women should be able to come out clearly as leadership. APC has no room for women inclusion in politics. Forget this, you are seeing them on television bringing women to talk. It's not correct. Now, let me tell you something. If I were Mr. President, as the leader of the party, I will say, look, my party, every state, if you have social number of assembly seats, we must have social number of women. If you have social number for the House of Reps, we must have social number as women. Take, for example, in my state, it was not easy, but I, I put my foot down. I said, listen, every local government, you cannot have less than five women as councillors. It doesn't matter. I'm not interested who the woman will be or who the woman will, will be. Each local government, you must not have less than five women as councillors. Now, we come up with, okay, you don't want women to be chairman. Why? That's okay. No problem. Every vice chairman must be a woman. We have 22 local government today. 23 vice chairmen are women. As I speak to you now, for this election, I'm meeting with the leadership of the party by Thursday. I said, listen, we have 32 seats. There's no way we can have less than six, seven women in the assembly. I will not take it. We must have it. I don't know what local government we can do balloting. But let you know be that you impose the women. You know, people are too theoretical. We have 13 seats at the federal house. I've told, I've said, look, gentlemen, we can continue with this. The world we're in today, we are past, we are moving. Thirteen states cannot be just men. We can't allow that. We have our daughters, we have our wives, we are intelligent, so we must have not less than four or five in the House of Reps. We have three senators. One is a woman, two are men. I don't believe in just merely coming out on television, who will include the women, who will include the youths, even when I win. No, start it now. <laughs> that was, she, that, you see, every presidential aspirant, right? The journalist was saying, we come out on television now to one woman, when I win, when I win, no problem. Now, you are a leader in your state, to right? Enforce it. That looks, I must make sure social number of women are involved, not only in political appointment. Mm. I have not less than five women as commissioners in my cabinet. I appointed two men who have served as chief judges. There's nothing people didn't come to me to tell me. I said, no, you can't do that. So that is what to tell your wife. That yeah. I appreciate you, my wife. I love you. Mm -hmm. You see, it's not by coming out to invite the people. My wife is 60 years. I love my wife. I kiss her. That is not it. <laughs> you have to go beyond that. Everybody now is campaigning. I will put women. Show us now, from now, that yes. you are running for president. In your state, show us that. To tell you when I win, I will do this. Now that the election is going on, bring the number of women. Not when you are there. You won't do it. Uh -huh. I, am, I, I want to show that I'm a man who believes that women should be encouraged. I'm a man who believes that it should be inclusion. And therefore, I've started it in my state, and I've gone beyond. I will not accept it. Women must have a slaughter. But if you leave it like that, hmm. when a male dominated society, they will not allow them. I will not be a party to All that. Right. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. The uh, Excellency Governor of River State, Newsom Wike, who is running to be Nigeria's president. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank, thank you very much. Sure, thank you. And that's our show tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shawan Kimale. Bye for now.